All right, here we go. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to AIWF Ringside Wrestling. I am Mad Matt Carter, being joined by Commissioner Smiling Diamond Dave, Commissioner Rick Diesel, and Hall of Famer Brian Danzig. And uh, Hall of Famer Pagan is in the background, too. She's going to tell us about uh, some moronic wrestler that, that, that we were talking about before the show went on. We finally decided we got, got to hit the record button and go because there's too many good stories going around. Look, uh, a few months ago, I bought a book. It was the biography of Wahoo McDaniel, but it's like a collection of stories from amongst his friends, fellow competitors, and, uh, and his uh, wife as well as like old newspaper clippings of his football career and everything. Simply fascinating. But Rick Diesel, you got a book written by a guy that's been through the AIWF more than a time or two called Body Slams, Beef Jerky, and Beer by Drake Tungsten. Now, so now Drake Tungsten, believe it or not, uh, is is a cool dude. I I've always got along with him fairly well, even though he's got a Decepticon tattoo on his arm, which means he's affiliated with Megatron, which usually means he can't be trusted, but that's not the case. I think he's just a fanboy only of the Decepticons and not a willing participant. But Rick Diesel, tell me about this book. You said you thumbed through it, and it's pretty good. It's, it's 247 pages of Drake Tungsten, The Life of in Wrestling. I mean, he talks from the when he first started, you know, all the way up to, I guess, you know, as when the book was, you know, published or whatever. But mm -hmm. he talks about his, his little spots he done on Raw. Talks a lot about the AWF. And, and believe it or not, I was ready to throw him under the bus. But he was very kind to us in the book. So it's on Amazon. Uh, Body Slams, Beef Jerky, and Beer by Drake Tuxton. Go get the thing, man. I'm telling you. If, if you want to know a lot about the wrestling in the Mid-Atlantic area, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in uh, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, you know, places like that, he covers it. I mean, he covers good, the, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly about it. So it's not a horrible book like, you know, like some wrestlers, you know, they just write books for the hell of it. But he actually done really good with it. I don't know if he had a ghost rider or, or what, but go get it, man. I How much what you said it was beer by Drake, Drake Tungsten. It's on Amazon for God's pretty, sakes. Pretty affordable I know a too, published right? Published writer on Amazon. Pretty uh, pretty affordable too, right? How much did it? Sell I think I get twenty bucks for it, which is not bad for a book. I mean, not not, not bad for a wrestling book. I can tell no. you those, those Mid Atlantic books that I have that I bought off of uh, Dick Bourne, they're great, but they're not cheap. You know, um, so but anyway, and it got here pretty quick, couple three days. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It was, yeah. it was not bad. So let's we'll put, let's make it let's shoot it up the charts. Yeah, man, we'll put a mention of it on the YouTube channel. Which yeah, uh, definitely. Let's let's talk about it because uh, I'd like to see him get on the uh, you know the uh, Marion, Virginia newspaper top ten bestseller list. Yeah, uh, Roanoke Times top ten. There you go. That's, yeah. yeah, there yeah. we go. If he could get a mention <laughs> in the Roanoke Times, that's a big deal in Southern Virginia. So you know that. Would, yeah, man, that would be awesome. So, uh, but yeah, talking about wrestling books, Drake Tungsten. Who would have known it? Author, wordsmith, and and published and available on Amazon. And and for those of you who don't know, some of our younger viewers. Amazon started out as what they did. They sell books, you know. I mean, they didn't they, when they yeah. first started out. They they didn't sell everything like it like it is now. You know, now if you got the itch for a set of cutlery, you know, you just hit up Jeff Bezos, and two days later, it's at the door. Boom. I ain't mad at him, no sir, <laughs> not at all. Um, so anyway, Reagan, you were telling us about a wrestler, some what is like the social. He's called the Progressive Liberal, and he works out. Where is he I, working? I can't remember, but he was in the news several years ago. He said he started working the gimmick, and now he's talking about how crazy fans are because they can't tell the difference between real life and not real life. Mm. He, he works out of Bo James's, uh, the trunk of Bo James's car. Dave knows. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw he was. Um, um, I saw an article, in, well, NPR about him. Uh, tell us and, about um, it. Yeah, and so, or CNN. Oh, it was CNN, not e e NPR. But uh, two pro wrestlers developed the progressive liberal to be the bad guy matches. Then the atmosphere turned far darker. That's the 
that's the headline for it. And it just <laughs> oh, talks all about how he came in and now, now how fans can't tell the difference and they're trying to stab him and attack him and murder him and, and everything. And, you know, my biggest thing though, is that is like just how he talks about the fans, you know, like, I think he's trying to make it sound like the fans don't always stop after the show. And I'm not, I, I know some fans do get out of control. I mean, yeah, just ask Casey true. Kane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I just, um, I don't know. I, I just felt like it kind of made it sound like they just don't know how to stop sometimes. Um, and I don't know about that. I don't know if I feel about that really. Like on a national level, like like to to tell tell a national organization that wrestling fans are unhinged, you know, especially about but it is about politics. That's another different, you know, the mixture of wrestling and politics, which he's kind of feels like he has the the niche of and stuff. Mm. Um well, you know, so I can tell how, you. how many people, how many question, how many people on here has met this guy? Not me. Uh, not me okay so dave's met him you've met him brian reagan have y'all met him no, no i've only ever read about him oh okay so, so, he's, he, he's worked on our shows so I, I can tell you this that if you want to talk about somebody who can't tell the difference about what's real and not then he needs to look in the mirror because this guy takes his arrogance in the dressing room and everywhere because this this little 15 minutes of fame or 12 and a half minutes of fame he's got has went to his head so bad yeah. that and, and well it don't help that Bo James is in his ear either. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Here, you know. Well, it you just know, it's tail to ride, but why is Bo James? Why these... is that name familiar? Why does that name sound familiar? I got a book here by Mark. Huh? Southern States Wrestling out of Tennessee. Oh. Okay. He's the one that proclaims to uh, have done this with Jerry Lawler, Bill Dundee, Buddy Landell. You go on and go on and go she on. They're best friends. They're, uh, you know, everything like that. I've known Bo James. Uh, Not the same Bo guy. James started out as a referee. Uh, okay. It, it reminds me of those guys – and I'm not going to say any names, those guys who work, who wrestle, who can't tell the difference between themselves and who they portray in the ring. Right. They, they, he he but, is one of those guys. He the can't. ones who ride their motorcycles in and gas everybody in the, in the armory because they rode the motorcycles in and are the guys who wave certain flags and, but also live that you know what i'm saying like you know what i'm saying that's what it reminds me of those guys that can't tell the difference you're gonna get mad when you. the character stops and the person begins mm -hmm. right right he is one of those guys but now yeah. i don't know when it started because he was doing that persona before he ever came he came and worked for us when he was just starting it you know with the hillary clinton Started, the ring. Um, all of this started about a week ago because Bo James set all that up. He wrestled for Bo James. And, uh, supposed to be wrestling Bo James. And Bo James set up all this interview and, and and all that stuff. You know, so he's been doing this. He's been running this gimmick for what? Two, three years started. now? A couple How of many years? years? Progressive liberal? Yeah, he's got a single ad. It's got Hillary Clinton, Obama, yeah. all them pictures, all that stuff, you know, so, and a jacket, so. Well, I mean, if you're running that kind of gimmick around these parts, I mean, let's just be honest. This is not a majority Democrat area of the country by any stretch of the imagination, and you're going to get people that don't like it because there's a lot of conspiracy theories going on out there that people are buying into. You know, the black helicopter crowd, they're on both sides of the aisle. And that's just a natural heat drawing type of thing to me in this part of the country, especially, you know, if he's in East Tennessee, what it sounds like to me, right? Is that what yeah, East yeah. Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, parts of Southern, uh, Southeastern Virginia. It says uh, Arkansas. Yeah. 
or, or like some in Arkansas, the Ozarks. Mm. Come on, he he yeah. runs it in every red state. He, you know, that'll that'll have him. And just like us, see, when we brought him in, we was like, ah, oh, this gimmick. You know, this thing's gonna really get some people fired up. What we didn't realize is that the guy had no idea how to do it. <laughs> he right. he had absolutely no idea how to do it and, and and he went out with the sole purpose of trying his damnedest to piss people off to the point they wanted to stab him yeah. and it, it wasn't that that he was overdoing the gimmick he just didn't know how to do it right he didn't know how to piss people off without getting stabbed you know what i'm saying yeah. it, it, it's just like the it, it's just like people who go out there and they insult the fans because they don't know how to get the heat without that. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we've had, remember Brian, we used to get so many people so mad at us, but we never had to really insult. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, we were so much in involved in ourselves that we just made people mad because they could just tell we thought we were better than them. We didn't have to. Tell them. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah, yeah, it's, it's easy. There's a difference between, uh, being a heel and being an asshole. Uh, yes. people, and he don't know the people don't know Perfect. how the di- they don't know the difference. Yeah. It's like yeah. you want to make them mad enough to make them want to see you get beat up, but you don't want to make them so mad that they don't want to come back. Yeah. Right. That's and you don't want to make and, them and so mad that they don't want to fight part. you in the parking lot. Right. Yeah. And you also don't want to run them off. There's right. a there's a line and and you can't you can't bring real life into your into your wrestling persona and then complain that the fans can't tell reality uh, from from the wrestling. And it's like, well, you're the one who's bringing reality into the ring. You're not bringing wrestling. You're bringing something. You know, you're uh, you know not only. Uh, are you bringing politics into it? I'm sure you're bringing a very condescending attitude mm-hmm. about it. Also, you can you can respectfully disagree on politics, but if you have a condescending attitude, uh, no matter what your beliefs are, then you know you're uh, like I say, you're going to make people mad and just run them off. Yeah, I've or, observed again, make them want to stab you in the parking lot or I've... both. I've observed the last couple of years in the AIWF Mid Atlantic. Anytime somebody comes out there and tries to do something with politics or whatever, like you know, wanting to be heel and be anti-Trump or 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 going the other way or whatever, the people in the audience, at least our audience, just sit there like this, right? Like yeah. I have to hear about fucking politics every day yeah. on the news. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just there's just some things I think you should just like to me, like some things should just be left out of wrestling and some things should be innuendo. Mm -hmm. Like I think I I think religion should be a fine line too, like with the innuendo. Yeah, we crucified Brian one time. Yeah, we did like like, wait, once again, we did. I said innuendo. I said innuendo. Yeah, but that, that, that wasn't right. intentional. That was not. It wasn't exactly. intentional, right? <laughs> but that's why I'm saying this innuendo. I would never go out and like, and we 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 were on a fine line. We did come out the city of Satan, but like, I don't know. Like, I would never, like, I don't know. When it's one thing, it's one thing to hook me up to a whipping post that happens to look like a cross. What would be? crossing the line would be like me coming out carrying a cross yes you know that, or, that's or, like, or, yeah. you're like no no you don't you don't mess with people's religion like i would never come out and like like completely like dog a religion right. while while we were out there to shoot like 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 in the ring i would mm-hmm. never mm-hmm. you know like do stuff like that but like that's what i'm saying like like sometimes like the fine line is there and i think people who know how to 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 do that fine line do a lot better right. in the ring as a character when you can do the fine line mm-hmm. and and i think in my opinion yeah you know cuz there's lots of evil characters i mean kevin sullivan 
I mean, he played that fine line. Yeah, and they, and they had people that were actual Satanists in Florida that would come to see Kevin and try to meet up with him after the matches and, and stuff like that. He was so believable at that. Mm-hmm. He said it scared the shit out of him. Yeah. You know? And they don't think that they would have got Eddie Graham was away at the time that they started that angle. And uh, Kevin Sullivan has said to this day that if Eddie had been there when they came up with that, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have never made it on TV. You know, and the thing too is, is I think we can all be proud of um, throughout the years in the IWF of being able to walk that line. Very good. mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like with Brian and, 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 and the family of darkness that time. You you just felt like that they might be killing chickens in the back in the back <laughs> right. parking lot, but you never seen them do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, and, we and, might imply it, but we're not going to explicitly say it or or show right. it or you know or you know act like we're doing it. I and then even with the whipping of Bad Brad, we didn't even show that. God, I love that video. That was the greatest video. <laughs> is that I the mean, one with right? Bad Kitty? Is that the yes. Bad Kitty? Yeah, I saw it was that. It was the silhouette, but we didn't. I mean, that yeah. was, that was, I mean, it was pretty obvious, but it was still, you know, mm-hmm. implied. Implied. Yeah. Because yeah, it was the strobe light was going off. Yeah. It was uh, obscuring. A complete view. <laughs> God, I need to that, find that. Uh, yes, you do. Oh, my yes. Oh, yeah. That, that needs to be on YouTube. Yes, it's got. It's mm-hmm. somewhere. It was for a long time. I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, they probably got flagged when <laughs> back in the day. It could have. I don't know. He'll never be able to run for political office now. But no, sure. will, will any of us? <laughs> no. Nope. But you know, on. getting back to this this uh, progressive liberal thing, anybody who followed that know that it petered out really quick because mm-hmm. once he went to a town and he put it he done it he went in so deep with it that they couldn't bring him back a lot of times and and that's why it faded so fast it wasn't because that we didn't bring him back and, and we didn't bring him back more because of his arrogance in the back it didn't have a whole <laughs> i mean what he done in the ring was bad but his i mean he was just so arrogant that I literally, you know, we had guys is like, you know, you bring him back. I'm not going to beat his ass in the locker room. Yeah, and that's what you don't want. But I also got, I ain't going to read it, but I I got a text message just now from a wrestler that, like, really went off on Bo James. He said, I can tell you some stuff about Bo James, but we're just going to leave it at that. (laughs) Like I said, we want to walk that fine line. Yes, we're going to walk that fine line. One thing that I that, that it's interesting about this to me as far as the wrestling fan psychology and and we you know we try to cover this promotion you know as a straight up sport and, and that's the way we like to do it and uh but you know the horse left the barn as far as what the real deal is about wrestling many years ago with the advent of the internet uh any type of kayfabe was pretty much obliterated. But I have noticed, like, especially with you guys bringing up this topic of this progressive liberal guy, like, the wrestling fans seem to not care anymore. Like, they're invested more emotionally now, it seems like, than they have been in a long time. I think back to the Survivor Series when Sami Zayn and Jey Uso's thing came to a head and they hugged, the crowd popped. And so did I. I'm sitting here watching it at home. I'm like, yeah, all right. You know, and and I got to thinking, well, damn, I've been doing indies for 25 years and and I'm into this too. Maybe is there some is there some kind of shift in the psychology of the wrestling fan and not not crummy ass smart marks? I mean people that come in and actually enjoy it, right? Is there something shifting in their mind again now where they're like really letting himself escape, you know, because all right, back in the seventies in Greenville, South Carolina, when Ole Anderson got stabbed, you know, everybody in that group was probably like that what we walking in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're all joking. Yeah. Wrestling's bullshit. But at some point in that night, Ole Anderson got some, an old man so mad that he took a hook knife and cut him from asshole to appetite and almost killed him. You know, do you think that they're, Maybe a shift happening back toward that, even with everything that's on the internet, you know, are people just starting to let themselves go again? 
Go ahead, Dave. I, I believe that. You know, I, I believe that with all my heart because you can see it in the crowds because you can really get under people's skin. You know, uh, I know from time to time I, I use punk ass bits, but it ain't never towards the crowd. Yeah. It, it, it's towards a wrestler or, or a manager or what, or even an announcer at one time. But you can get under those fan skin. You don't have to cuss them. You don't have to call their names. You can just stand there and smile at them like I do and laugh at them. And that pisses them off more than anything. Mm -hmm. You know, so I believe that there is fans that that day will come back that uh, you'll have to watch your P's and Q's when you go out there, or you're going to have to have some awful good security. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Brian? You've been back to calling matches for a few for a while now. What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that um, there are people out there who, because they think they know everything about wrestling, they're like, oh, well, these guys aren't tough. They're not you know, you know, I, I know what they're doing. It's like, just because, just because these guys are in the ring looking out for each other and, and not, you know, not trying to kill each other doesn't mean they're not tough. Yep. You can be, you can be a, an entertainer and you can also be a badass. Mm -hmm. It's not, there's, those aren't mutually exclusive. And, and a lot of people think that's the case. And, mm -hmm. and 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 most of the time they they find out the hard way that oh these guys aren't tough I'm gonna I'm gonna step to them and and show them what a real man is and then they get knocked on their ass mm -hmm. or or thrown over the top rope and land on their damn head and almost <laughs> well, die. This, mm -hmm. this also goes to like like with what happened with Seth Rollins last year and you see this on Twitter all the time with female wrestlers. Like where people get convinced that some wrestler wants them to send them Apple gift cards and then they get like get played for all these gift card money and send them and think these wrestlers are wanting to like be their friends online and then they send them a bunch of money and then they get mad because they find out that's what happened to Seth Rollins at a pay-per-view. Some guy got um, scammed by some guy pretending to be Seth Rollins and sent him a bunch of gift cards and he attacked Seth Rollins on a paper. Oh view. yeah. That, no, that was at Raw. I remember was that. Was that Raw? Yeah, okay. it was. It was after his match at Raw. I remember. So okay. that's what that was about. I thought yeah. the guy was just a and lunatic. You see on Twitter, yeah, you see that on Twitter all the time. Like like Jordan Grace has put that up before. Like I and other female, I will never contact you for gift cards. Yeah. I will never go in your DMs and ask you for Apple gift cards. Like, these are things that are not going to happen. I am not going to DM you ever, ever. Yeah. Like, she, and she's so, right. I got one from Oscar last year. So, you know. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> yeah. Asking for a $10 Apple gift card. Sure did. Yeah. And there's people out there who fall for this. And, <laughs> you know, and so, you know, here we're talking and I'm saying, you know, I mean, and that's just kind of an extension of, of fans getting in fights, yeah. but fans falling for fake accounts of wrestlers getting mad and then jumping on the entrance right way of Raw and attacking a wrestler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what gave it away to me was, oh, I don't know, Asuka's been employed with the WWE for all, about five years now, and she's at the top of the card, and right. she's probably a millionaire. And why would she need an Apple gift card? Exactly. Even if it were real, you don't need a ten dollar gift a gift card from me. Yeah, no <laughs> you, you need to give me a hundred dollar Apple gift card. No kidding, man. And like when they they do these autograph signings or whatever, you have to buy tickets like sixty five dollars to get a picture and and autograph. I'm just like, nah, dude. Uh, -uh. you know, you know that that just no. They don't need a ten dollar gift card, Rick Diesel. You are a busy man during the shows, and I know a lot of times you, you don't now, even get to here's, watch. Here's, <clears throat> here's what I think, Matt. <clears throat> I think <clears throat> that when kayfabe 
got exposed. I mean, and, and I'll just say it like it is because that's me, me and Brian's been doing this since not, late 90s, ain't we, Brian? Mm -hmm, yeah. that, that, that's why you're so big in, in England. I see <laughs> that with my own eyes. But uh, <clears throat> when kayfabe got exposed, I think what happened was fans started getting in this mindset of, okay, the matches aren't as important because we know that it's choreographed. So it now it's all, they get invested because now it, they're forcing us to tell better stories. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they're forcing us to walk this line and you, you have to decide, you know, how far can I go? And sometimes you go a little far and fans might get, got, might get pissed off. But for the most part, now there was a time back in, you know, 20, 25, 30, 40 years ago, a fan would stab you at a drop of a hat. Mm -hmm. Now I think it takes more. They do get mad. If, if a fan ever attacks a wrestler, it, it's because there's an issue other than just the, the show. I mean, you know what right. I'm saying? Because I think yeah. fans nowadays, they, they, they have their opinion of what wrestling is. And they want to get invested in storylines. They mm -hmm. want you to tell them a story. Like Brian said, they, they want to come there to get away from the world. Mm -hmm. and, and we might use what's going on in the world to help tell our stories. But you got to be careful because, like, like you said, politics, getting back to this moron, politics is a very touchy subject right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And they don't care. Some people don't care. They're, they're so politically motivated on either side now. They don't care if it's just a show. Mm -hmm. They take politics very personally. Yeah. And, and so they, will, they will actually say, well, you know, I don't care if it's a show. That pisses me off, and, and we're going to have an issue. Yeah. So, but I think, they're, I, I think it's good in a way that they're forcing us to tell better stories and more stories now. That's why I keep preaching to guys at our shows, story, 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 because everybody knows what a wrestling match is. Yeah, there's Like I said, I've said this on the show before, there's not a whole lot of moves in wrestling. And after about the third or fourth match, you've seen every move that can be done. They're mm -hmm. just done by different people in different, you know, uh, situations. Situ yep, situations. So that's why the... Uh, that's why the storytelling is so important nowadays. Personal yeah. issues draw money. And if you have watched Tales from the Territories on Vice, you know that in the Memphis Territory in Jerry Jarrett's office, there was a sign that said personal issues draw money. And um, if I had a Christmas gift that I could give to everybody in the Mid-Atlantic, it would be a copy of that sign. Um, because it's the truth. I mean, you know, I mean, think about like even back then, you guys have seen the shoot interview I did with Jimmy Valiant. He told me about a year and a, like a year, year and a half run he had with Jerry Lawler, where they just kept having return after return after return. It was basically the same match every Monday night, you know, different stipulations, but it was King and Valiant and they still drew big houses, you know, week after week, after week, after week, after week, just because there was a personal issue there. So I don't know. That's my opinion, whatever it's worth. Mm -hmm. Not much. But yeah, uh, that's that's the thing that's when I mean, you you have to be an athlete to be a professional wrestler to do it the correct way anyway. But at the same time, what we're what you're doing when you put on a wrestling event, you're putting on a five to seven act play with beginning first match second match up until the up until the main event you're put you're going out there a very athletic hard on your body you have to be tough to be able to do it but you're putting on a play mm -hmm. and that's what the guys have to realize that's that's what you're doing and and go out there and do it go out there and tell your story is it the two quick guys trying to out quick each other is it the is it the little guy against the big guy is it the two the two big guys clashing heads mm -hmm. i mean it could be as simple as that or it can be more complicated of you know this guy screwed over this guy you know that's uh the story can be as simple or as complicated 
uh, as you want it to be, but it has to be, it has to be intriguing. It has to catch <coughs> the uh, the crowd's attention, mm -hmm. and and if you can't do that, it doesn't matter how smooth your moon salt is. It doesn't matter how well you can chain wrestle, how many moves you know. If you can't tell a story with those moves, the crowd is just going to sit there and look at you. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right, fellas, do you care if I let me uh, pay some bills real quick? All right. And then I got another topic for us. Uh, let me get the old PowerPoint up here and live to tape, baby. Uh, current slide. Okay. Um, if you would love to advertise our excellent program here, you know the drill. It's 10 bucks a month for a 30 second to one minute read. Very affordable for you folks with small businesses or side businesses. This is what this is designed for. You know, we don't expect to have Hendrick Chevrolet on here, you know, but if you got a side hustle you're doing, we can help you out 10 bucks a month. And then we take it that week off every now and then, but not often. I mean, we took one last week um, because of scheduling issues, but I mean, come on, man, you know, 10 bucks a month, you know, we're only going to bill you after four reads anyway. So if we do take a week off, it's not like you're going to lose anything. Uh, but yeah, 10 bucks a month. Or if you want to shoot a video commercial, it's 30 weekly rate is six. If you got a show or something you want to advertise, we can, you can, we can help you out. All you got to do is hit us up at AIWF20 at hotmail.com or see us at the live events. Uh, we are all over the place. We're streaming on Facebook live. Now the show will be available on our YouTube page uh, very soon. Uh, anywhere you find your favorite podcast. And if our uh, Roku guy, well, it is what it is. So um, <laughs> the, YouTube, the YouTube page, though, really has been blowing up over the last couple of weeks, guys. And I, I, folks, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you is all I can say. So when you head over to YouTube, search AIWF Ringside Wrestling. Uh, that's it. AIWF Ringside Wrestling. We not only archive this show here, but we have clips that I shoot, clips that come from the official studios of the AIWF Mid-Atlantic. Uh, so you get matches there too. We know that's the most popular thing. I mean, so we got it there. And we got a lot more scheduled coming this month. We got a video premiering tomorrow morning, then another one on December 12th, and then two big matches for you coming up on Christmas Eve. And if I can get my hands on some more footage, we'll have more for you before then. We're also on Instagram. The Instagram page is doing fairly well. It's kind of leveled off a little bit. We're just shy of 200 followers, but it's still nice. But wait, hey, we've got more than one Instagram page. So for news and notes and any breaking news, you want to visit AIWF Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. If you want to see some cool videos from the archives, you can head over to Diesel 24-7. That's Diesel, D-E-E-Z-E-L 247 for those of you listening on podcast. And that's where we're at there. Premier Auto Detailing has our newest and greatest. Well, I don't want to say greatest. I'm going to make the children fight amongst each other if I start picking favorites. But uh, it's Premier Auto Detailing. They can make that old jalopy look like it just rolled off the showroom floor. You can call 336-883-5722 for more information. Again, that's 336-883-5722. Now, they all they not only do if your your personal vehicle, but if you want a car lot or something in the Mount Airy area and you need a bunch of vehicles done, they can they can help you out with that as well. So that's Premier Auto Detailing. Give them a call, 336-883-5722. One more time for those of you listening, 336-883-5722. Tease Creations Custom Apparel. If you want a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, or koozie, Man, they got it, and they have got their Hollywood co uh, Hollywood holiday collection in right now uh, at teescreations22.com. That's teescreations, no apostrophe, just tscreations22.com or facebook.com slash teescreations, and you can check out their entire lineup. And if you got like a custom image or something you want them to make for you, man, hit them up. They can do a lot. They can do a lot with technology. You know, you want to put uh, put a picture yes. of grandpa on a sweatshirt, they can handle all that kind of stuff for you. So visit them, Tease Creations. They are a great sponsor, and we're so grateful for them. TeaseCreations22.com or on Facebook.com at Tease 
creations. All right. So we'll do the rest of the ads later. Uh, so guys, you know, I'm critical of AEW when I think it needs to be criticized. Um, I will say that the first Battle of the Belt show I went to here in Charlotte was a stinker for the most part. Um, but when they do stuff right, I feel like I owe it. Give them credit because AEW catches a lot of shit on the internet. Um, you know, it's kind of weird over there. But man, I don't know if you guys saw the MJF William Regal incident this past week. But holy shit, man. That was intense. And if, for those of you who didn't see it, MJF cuts a promo about talking about how William Regal called him and they had been working together behind the scenes for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, and he talked about how, you know, that uh, William Regal told him that uh, he needed to reach for the brass ring, you know, not the AEW diamond, but the brass ring. And uh, he took out a pair of brass knucks and hit William, William Regal in the back of the head, knocked him into the middle of next week. The announcers we were just aghast. They stretched William Regal out because there's rumor he's leading, going back to WWE. Uh, but MJF said something to him about that. You told me when I was a fresh face kid seven years ago that it, at NXT, we hire people with the potential of being big stars. And when you become one, come back and see me. And I thought it was just one of the cold bloodest things I've ever seen a bad guy wrestler do. And I don't even know if I've ever seen the MJF wrestle a match, but man, that guy is just fucking incredible. I don't know if you thought, if you guys have saw the clip that I'm talking about or have any thoughts, comments on MJF? You know, this guy's been around the scene a long time, I know. But, man, he has put himself in a good spot here. Yeah, he certainly has. I, I didn't see the clip. I just saw some, you know, I've, I've seen uh, pictures and comments on Twitter. But, yeah, I, I have seen him uh, talk uh, before. Yeah, I've seen I've seen him do promos, and, and he is. I mean, he's... Uh, already at the age he is is uh is at a level that you know some guys never reach 26 so he's, he's just uh going to go up from there yeah I'm, mm. I'm i'm really impressed uh with what i've seen from him so far and uh yeah I, i'm expecting i'm expecting big things from him um e even more big things in the future mm -hmm. for for mjf yeah. Who else? Rick Diesel, smiling down today. Thoughts well, on MGF, I, MJF? I want to know why Regal's doing what he, if he is going back to WWE, why? I mean, he had a chance. He had a whole, and I, and I don't know the, the, I don't know the backstory. Maybe he's they Triple H's boy. Right. <laughs> Do what? He's Triple H's boy. He's like, and that no, very well could be what it is. But I mean, he had, he had a whole company full of young minds that he could maybe try to, and I'm not talking about the arrogant pricks at the you know, top of the ladder. I'm talking about these young guys, Wheeler Yuta and, and, you know, Orange Cassidy and all those guys that he could take their minds and get them and, and mold them. You know what I'm saying? He, I mean, he had, he could have been such an influence on that company. And if, if he, if he's going back up North for the simple reason of just, and it ain't cause he needs the money. We know that. Oh yeah. So, I mean, if he's going back up there just because Triple H called him up and said, come on back up here, man, you know, I need you backstage or whatever, uh, then that's just arrogance. I have a saying that I've learned working in corporate America that hey, people don't quit jobs. People quit people. And I have a feeling, you know, William Regal's financially well off, you know, um, I think that maybe uh, if this is true that he's going back to WWE, maybe he does not like management at the company and doesn't think it's running right. Something must be something maybe going on behind the scenes that we don't know about that's frustrating him. And he doesn't, it, it just feels like, you know what? I had more fun at the other place now that the old man's gone and Trips is in charge. And eh, it'll probably, you know, probably be a more relaxed work environment. I don't know. That's just yeah, my opinion. I, yeah, I don't know for sure. I've seen rumors 
that he wasn't happy with management in AEW, but again, those are just rumors. And and Stephen Regal, uh, or does he go by William Regal now? I, I don't know. I can't. I can't remember. Tony Schiavone called him three different things <laughs> right. tonight, so I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, like he he'll be the first one to say that he's often misquoted, and if you don't hear it straight from him, then don't listen to it because because uh, he gets misquoted so often. But yeah, I have heard that he wasn't happy with AEW. For me, just from just from what I've seen, and just and th- this is just pure speculation on my part. I think he didn't want to leave WWE in the first place. Mm-hmm. He was fired, and so he went to the next his next best option. And I think I think WWE has been his home for a really long time. And that's where he was most comfortable. And now that he has the opportunity to go back, and I, th- I think that's what he's going to do. And also there are people who they may not need the money, but they're just going to go with their best option. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, I'm going to make this amount here. I'm going to make more here. I don't mm-hmm. need more money, but why not have the extra security of more money mm-hmm. you know i may not need the money but maybe you know you know my kids or their kids you know they're you know you may be building a uh you know a legacy f- for them mm-hmm. <laughs> um oh no what i do oh okay um just kind of bringing it back to like some aiwf stuff like there's people that maybe in this room who've left AIWF or other places that thought they were going to be greener pastures that were not greener pastures um, (laughs) that turned out to be uh, like we were talking about before five dollars for two people um, (laughs) that you realize that the place that was better was the place you left yeah so um, I think that happens in the big leagues i think that happens on the indies i think that happens everywhere and sometimes when you get the opportunity to go back you you go back so i sure as hell did well i feel like uh i've got aew is not an old school wrestler friendly anyhow no i mean especially with adam page doing that interview a couple of months back where he said he didn't really feel it needed to listen to the old guys yeah. I just thought that was like, like that made my skin crawl. I was like, that, then why the fuck are they there? If you're not, that's what age gives you is wisdom. Pick their yeah. brain; it will help you. Even if you don't use the ideas, man, talk to them. It'll it'll make your brain work better. You know, never understood that. You know, um, I could listen to you. when I was younger, teenage days. That's when uh, like a lot of World War II veterans were like hanging around in the Liberty Fair Mall in Martinsville, and if they one of those older fellas ever sat down and started telling me stories from over in Europe in World War II, I'd sit there and listen. You know, I just fascinated by it, you know, and um, I don't know why you wouldn't use somebody else's wisdom to your advantage, but you know, I was a dick when I was in my 20s, you know, and didn't really listen to anybody, so I kind of get it, like we all go through that phase. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. I've been in my uh, early 20s, you went at that time, early you know any time in your 20s you you think you know it all and yeah. you just you think that you think everybody older is out of touch like oh they don't know what they're talking about that's how things were back in their day but it's not like that anymore i can't tell you how many times uh, <laughs> my kids have told me you know when i'm trying to give them advice for stuff like at school and like but it's not like it was back when you went to school Yes, it is. It is not change. I mean, it's. It, I mean, of course, there's always some changes, but there, it's it's basically the same thing. It's just like just like with wrestling. Yeah, the the young kids. Yeah, that you just you can't tell them anything, and you just. I mean, you can tell them and ho- hope it sinks in, but for the most part, they they think they know it all. Mm. One other thing, I'd like to give AEW credit for now. This. Me working this late shift during AEP this year that I'm going to continue working until the end of the year gives me an opportunity at night while I'm running reports 
to turn on the wrestling show and kind of have it as, as background noise as I'm crunching numbers, right? So I've been watching more TV wrestling for the last month and a half than I have in four or five years, honestly. I mean, I watch every night, Raw, uh, NXT, Dynamite, uh, then on Friday, SmackDown, and if I remember the uh, Dynamite uh, Rampage show on TNT, right? Um, and so another cool thing that AEW did right this week, and I, it, it, it's the devil's in the details for me. It's these little things, right? Orange Cassidy. I don't care what anybody says about him. I don't like when he puts his hands in his pockets and runs around. I do not like that. But the man it cheapens it. It, the, the man is a man of the people. He is very popular. It, you know, I've mm-hmm. heard all over the place he moves a lot of merch. Um, he, he reminds me of a preppy Brian Danzig because he carries the belt in a backpack. You know, and it, <laughs> he just seems like he doesn't care about it. You know, because we used to we used to joke with uh, you know Brian like after he defended the U.S. title, he put the belt in his bag and it didn't come out again <laughs> until the next show and. You know, uh, he didn't really care about it and all that kind of stuff. I think we even got footage you kicking it across the floor at one time. And so that kind of remind, you know, kind of took me back a little bit. But they have a lumberjack match this week, right? And it shows you how uh, freaking uh, schizophrenic AEW can be sometimes because they have Excalibur. He does the Dynamite show now. But Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, and Taz do the Friday night show now, right? Uh, Because, you know, Jim with his health problems and everything, I I don't guess they can get two hours of TV out of him anymore every week. But um, so they're having this lumberjack match with Orange Cassidy. And one of the guys, uh, and Orange Cassidy goes out of the ring, and one of the lumberjacks picks him up and throws him back in the ring. And Taz makes the comment, well, he didn't do any favors for – so whoever he was wrestling, I can't remember who he was wrestling. Um, he didn't do any favors for so-and-so by just pitching Orange Cassidy back in the ring. And Tony Schiavone and JR turned on him like feral cats and were like, what are you talking about, Taz? That's the idea of a lumberjack match. You're not supposed to beat the guy up when he falls out of the ring. You're supposed to throw him back in. And I was just like, thank you, God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> There are two guys in the ring psychologists actually know what the match is supposed to be. And and evidently, at least a couple of wrestlers at ringside that knew what it was supposed to be. I mean, in the end, it ended up like all Lumberjacks, big fight, you know, crazy yeah. finish, whatever. It, but um, it just reminded me, like, wait a minute, you know, have we gotten so far off the wheels that, that, that uh, you know, at the beginning of a Lumberjack, the first time somebody goes out, you don't start the Pier 6 brawl right then, you know. <laughs> You pitch them back in, you're gonna have to need somebody to come out a few times before you start cheap shotting them behind the referee's back, you know. And, and I, I thought, that, I thought Taz it was just said Taz was in that wrestler mindset of uh oh, the guy gets thrown out, I'm gonna get my shots in. Yeah, this is what you do, right? <laughs> so, well, what what's the match supposed to be? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. This is just how we've always done it. <laughs> no, no, no. You're just actually supposed to throw it back in. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, AEW is a is a is in a different universe than old school wrestling. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, you know, you can just watch by the matches. I mean, that those there will be more flips than headlocks. And I mean, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's all about the dance down there. It's all about how many how many spots they can get in. It's, it's spot fest. Yeah. It's what it is, and it's you know it. They make it. They they don't even try to make it look like a competition anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a couple know, of guys. There's a couple of guys like your Brian Danielsons. You know, he he him and Dax had a clinic yeah. Wednesday night. That was awesome. And I didn't know that Dax was Casey McKnight until like six months ago. So, um, and I heard it on the internet. Go show you how much I pay attention to shit. You remember right? him? Corey, yeah, be friends with Corey Edsel. I, I don't know that I ever worked on a show with him. If I have, I've forgotten, but. Um, well, he done a lot down at Clayton. 
Oh, okay. That's probably where I said. Yeah, he was he was one of the Clayton boys uh, that, oh, okay. that you know worked on those shows when we went down there so much. Hey, man, I, yeah, I used to love going. I, that's where I got uh, hooked on Zaxby's. Man, was down at yeah. Lewis Moore. They would come oh, in yeah. and do concessions, and every every now and then I'll send Lewis Moore a picture when I get Zaxby's and just write "fuck you" on it, and and, it <laughs> and, and he knows exactly what that means. You know, like I've spent more money with. Oh, Zaxby's. your fault. Yeah, thank you, mm-hmm. Lewis Moore, for getting me addicted to the drug known as Zaxby's. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so it, it's interesting so i felt like you know i've get when i you know when i deserve to catch shit i'll be first one to give it to them but when they do something good man uh and they did they did pretty well i didn't want to pay attention to much of the uh, the rest of the show but the mjf the dax match and and that thing with orange Cassidy friday night stuck out with me so i thought i'd mention it you know just a free you know that's what wrestling fair. is anymore. I, I don't think it's about hey, th- let's take a because if you'll notice the the stuff that gets the the hits, the clicks on the the internet, it's never matches anymore. It's moves. It, it it's it's ten seconds of a move or a promo or somebody botching a move and getting hurt. On Twitter, yes, but YouTube, I, ha- I tend to disagree. I see a lot of full matches on YouTube that get a lot of hits. As a matter of fact, I got two on our web uh, YouTube page that's getting a lot of hits. Well, right we discussed now. that earlier. I mean, uh, yeah, that's I mean, the Jerky Boys, but I don't care. I take it. I'll take it. But you know yeah. what it did? It drove six hundred viewers to the Paul Parazzi Sudo uh, Sudo's match. Yeah, uh, and and normally before uh, the women's videos went up. Uh, we were lucky, man, if we got 100 views. So I am glad the traffic is is coming through there. So, yeah, keep them coming. Thank you. And no Thank pressure you. on us to keep it up. Yeah, no kidding. That's all right. That's all right. I got my phone around here somewhere. I'll film some more footage come de- uh, December 31st. What we're trying to do, you know, I'm hoping this will become the number one source of material, uh, at least for, you know, short clips or single matches and stuff like that. Hopefully, I still want to see the Roku channel with the whole shows on there, you know, the big events, all that kind of stuff. But I mean, I'm really hoping that we can, we can make this a, a prime. Well, the thing about it is, is, is we take those short clips and those single matches and we push the, the big shows on the Roku channel. Yep. Exactly. Right. So in the end, the YouTube channel is going to be there for you to watch some matches and everything, but ultimately we'll want to drive you to the Roku channel is to raise awareness for that. So that being said, now you know our marketing strategy. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe shouldn't have told that one. Give but, away all our secrets. No, 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 no. My lips are sealed I, about most of it anyway. Um, let's see. What what else was I going to talk about? I had something else that I wanted to bring up, and I can't think of it. So let me let you guys what? think on it a minute. Let me read some Brad, copy. You, you think about that. I, I, I want to say something. Uh, Dave, you look spooky, man. Yes, it does. Like a floating <laughs> head. Oh, buddy, look like, like a head just floating in the darkness. Yeah, one, one well, of the old, old guys sleep family. tonight now. Yeah. You know, so if I turn on the light, it gets too bright. Oh! Go. Talk if to I us. If I turn that light on, it gets too bright. That looks like a bathroom. Go ahead and go back to what it was. And so. Let's go. Uh, Bray Wyatt special I effects. I the wrong button and I can't get to go out. Uh, I wanted to say uh, thank you to Reagan uh, because of what she said. Uh, you know, it happens on the independents also because uh, that hit home and, and, and I'm guilty. Uh, you know, Anybody knows me knows I left AIWF for two years or a little over. And I thought the grass was going to be greener on the other side of, of running shows. And it wasn't. It, it, it was uh, a big financial burden, you know, and, and it was a lot of headaches. It was a lot of pain in the ass. And, and, and my hat's off to Rick Diesel. Uh, I've seen since day one we've been the IWF. I know what Rick Diesel's went through to build the AIWF to what it is today. And but I had to go see if the grass was greener and it wasn't. 
And when I got the opportunity to come back to the AIWF, I was, I, I was like a kid in a candy store, you know, uh, uh, I missed a lot in the two years or a little over with Don while he was still active and, and with Brian, with Rick Diesel, with, with, with several of the guys and you know, I can't go back and change that now. Uh, I can only make the best out of, out of with me coming back, uh, do what I can, you know. But, but Reagan, I thank you because uh, you hit the nail uh, right on the head. Uh, the grass is not always greener. And it don't have to be in the WWE or the AEW or anywhere else. It happens right here at home on the independent circuits also because I'm the guilty duck in that. I'll admit it. And that was a mistake. And, I, and I've said, talked to Rick Diesel, and I've told him several times, you know, that, that was a mistake of making that move that I wish I'd never made. But those saying is you got to live and you learn. Yeah. You know, so everybody on this to... Zoom call except Rick Diesel has done yeah. that. Yeah. I tried, but I wouldn't let me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everybody back then, I mean, I mean, like like I was saying last 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 time, well not last with the last time we had a show, like, you know, 20 years ago it was different. There wasn't as many places to go, you know, around, <laughs> you know, and and uh, you know, some places pop up you know, and you think, you know, hey, that sounds better. They said they're going to do this, that, and other, you know, and it happens, and you do miss things, and, you know, that just happens, and, you know, that's water under the bridge, and we're all back now, so yep, you know, it all worked on. out in the end, and like it. Brian and I spent our $5 on a, on a nab and a and a, 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 a drink, so 250 between us. So. <laughs> well, it, 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 it's also like getting all the ribs back now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, man, I broke a bunch of ribs. And then all of a sudden, oh, they've healed now. So everything's better again. Mm -hmm. That's what it's like when, when, you know, important people, for the lack of a better term, you know, wander and then come back. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I don't know the right term because, like I said, I've never <laughs> let myself leave. Lord, we're uh, getting too sentimental. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to cry. God damn. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, here, let me read some commercials while y'all like to your tears. <laughs> while I regain my computer. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, this is uh, this sentimental break is brought to you by Puffs Plus with lotion. Also from uh, uh, from uh, arcnc.org arcnc.org well no not actually bill Polly sponsors this spot and uh he was told all his life he couldn't do this he couldn't do that because he had a disability and uh he found out when he got older that the only thing that stands in between you and your goals is your ability to work hard so he's got a son with a disability and trying to lead by example by showing him that uh you can do anything that you want to set your mind to uh, set your mind to it and for those of you who may be watching or listening that do have a disability or know somebody with a disability, this great service here in the state of North Carolina is a big help and can offer services for you and assistance and just all kinds of good things. They're based in Raleigh. They're called the Ark of North Carolina and their website, which we strongly encourage you to go check out. It's arcnc.org. That's arcnc.org, A-R-C nc.org that's arc nc.org for assistance and uh, advice for people with disabilities and their family members so again visit them now arc nc.org that's arc nc.org branch management is our first sponsor and we absolutely appreciate them like crazy they can do Complete tree removal or just pruning, getting like you see in the picture there, uh, getting trees away from power lines, whatever you need. <clears throat> you know, sometimes these trees tend to grow kind of wild and crazy near structures and you worry during storm season. 
man, is that old oak going to come crashing through grandma's living room one time? Well, no need to worry about that anymore because all you got to do is give branch management a call and they can assist you with any arbor is related or tree issue. Yeah, let's just keep it simple. Any tree issues you got. So they offer general pruning, trimming their structures, complete tree removal. Uh, you know, although we don't recommend that in North Carolina, we, uh, this fat guy loves the shade, especially during the summertime. So you can be eligible for a $100 referral bonus if you tell a friend. Uh, that is uh, just for the tree service, mind you. Uh, but it's uh, branch management, and they operate in the Surrey County area of North Carolina. They can handle any tree-related needs you may have. For those of you listening on podcast, you need to call 336-648-9282. They offer free estimates or 336-320-8994. That's for the tree service and the $100 referral bonus. Again, those numbers, 336-648-9282 or 336-320-8994. Now, branch management has also branched out into general landscaping, pressure washing, and I think they do gutter cleaning and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can reach out to them, that branch of branch management, 336-648-2487 for the landscaping and the pressure washing and general contracting. Again, that's 336-648-2487. And be sure to tell them that AIWF Ringside Wrestling sent you. Tease Treats, our most delicious sponsor, is a food truck that operates out of the Surrey County area of North Carolina, but they can be multiple places at the same time and can serve in most of the state and even do a lot of work in Virginia here lately, I understand. Uh, they're locally owned and operated in Mount Airy. You can call 336-755-8204 for availability uh, or to find out where they're at or if you want to book them. 336-755-8204. One more time for those of you listening on the radio, 336-755-8204. Zero four for tease treats and of course uh, on the web at facebook.com slash tease treats facebook.com slash tease treats yummy 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 got me craving cheesecake now after doing that read oh my <laughs> goodness uh, where's tease treats gonna be at this week rick diesel nowhere uh, oh, God, thank they're, you. they're, they're taking a just, week off yeah we are done the uh um uh, uh Galax, Virginia, um, uh, light festival on mm -hmm. the last two weekends in a row. We got to take a break. It's about killed us. Yeah. Going up and down that mountain, I'm sure was a barrel, barrel yeah. full of monkeys. Cold. Uh, was it real cold up there? The uh, first week it was this past week. It wasn't so bad. Awesome. So, um, like I said earlier, we were talking about it's everybody got, got their crying over and done with. We all good now, as far as that mm -hmm. goes. I went and dried my tears on, I don't know, <laughs> something. Um, so I'm trying to find a match here. Uh, I'm looking in the archives here, something else that's coming up, uh, on, um, on YouTube. Uh, premier and soon, you go ahead and mute it. I'll share the screen a little bit with you. One of the most hilarious situations I've seen in quite a while. I'm soon meeting, yeah. So, let me show you this. This is from uh, this is from not November 12th, I think this was September. Late September is the night that Jack won the Mid Atlantic title. So it was a show after Deal with the Steel, I believe. Uh, but we had a guy come in. Uh, Jack had gone to the ring. His partner had abandoned him that he was going to take on pro wrestling's DNA with. And this guy named uh, named uh, Alex Atkins showed up. And of course, Jack was not happy about, you know, having to deal with a partner. Uh, but this was a very interesting thing because. Alex Atkins had never met Jack before. And I'm telling you, when you when this uh when this premieres on YouTube, you're gonna you're gonna absolutely love it. Um let me see here. When is it scheduled? Uh it is scheduled to premiere on December 12th, Monday, December 12th at 6. He can't he remember he was saying, Brian, that he was him and Jake had been best friends. He was calling Jack Jake. <laughs> and he said that we've been friends for the longest time and 
and all this kind of stuff. Look at that. <laughs> they tagged him. In. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it's uh, yeah, like like I had said, he he was there to uh, to impress Jack. To he wanted to become a member of the Fighters Club. Yeah, but uh, when the first thing you do is crawl on your knees and hug him around the waist, that's uh, that's a little Den Dennis that, Condry no move right there. Right? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's not what you get what's his your, attention. What you're what you're already an established team, that's fine. But when you're trying to impress the guy and get him uh, get him to bring you in, that's uh, that's not the best way to make a first impression. Well, no, sir. Hey, let me go back to the video, and I'm gonna share it with sound this time because I want you to hear a little bit of this because this to me is just oh, it's 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 must see TV. I I just absolutely love it. So just. Let's go back here. Let's go back to the video and just check. It out. Been thinking of old country song, Feed Jake. Look it up, kids. Go to the Mississippi. We're here at ringside. Hey, Jake is going to get him, man. Jake's going to get him. Jake's going to get him. <laughs> Isn't that not great? Jake's going to get him. So that that video is going to premiere uh, ne uh, next Monday uh, on the twelfth. Uh, let's see here. Uh, well, Zoom's giving me a warning. Accidentally, almost good thing Zoom's got that built in. Almost ended this meeting by accident by hitting the exit button. That would have been an abrupt end of this week's episode. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, everybody, like, what the hell happened? Was that, was that? Did they mean to do that? Was that the, like the ending? Sopranos? No, it, I'm sure it was not like it was not cleverly planned like that. Let's see, we got uh I believe what have we got premiering? I'm sorry, live to tape again, folks. Um recently uploaded upcoming up upcoming. Oh yeah, Benny Conley, and no, that's Christmas Eve. Hmm. Well, I can't find <laughs> another one on Christmas. Oh, I'll tomorrow. get you something. Dirty Joe versus Logan Quindell premiering tomorrow on the minute uh, on the Ringside Wrestling YouTube channel. Uh, speaking of stuff that we premiered, Brian, we took a, a look a back at your match with uh, with um, Neil Leathers. Uh, kind of did. I don't know if you saw the video, but we kind of did an up close and personal look back on the YouTube channel. Uh, of that match and i had to i had to do it that way because of the copyrighted music i didn't want to you know get get a strike by youtube for copyright which is real easy to do mm -hmm. and and we had kind of talked through it a little before but i'm trying to find it now here it is um chair we call this the chair shot heard around the world <laughs> and uh There's a story behind that too, but I'm not sure we should be the ones to tell it. Right. You know? I mean, I, I would like for Chains, if if anybody ever reached out to him, I'd like for him to come on here and tell the story behind that. Mm -hmm. Because hearing yeah. him tell it is just amazing. Of, of yeah, how, I was, of what I was, led up to that. Yeah, I was there for the lead up, but yeah, I think it would be best described by the um uh by the person who actually the shooter uh, did, yeah exactly <laughs> that was the best way to describe that one mm -hmm. well i tell you what i'll reach out to him this week and, and i'll mention that to him and let you know what he said yeah because i'd love him to come on and, and let's just bring this up and, and just let him tell i mean from the dressing room because that's where it all started mm -hmm. god Oh, well, see, that was the thing about it that was weird that I had forgotten was like when Neil Leathers comes to the ring, chains came with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. my what I was pondering when I showed this to the, the to the YouTube audience was I need to ask Brian. Brian, going into this, was chains uh, was you were you aware that chains was gonna turn on Neil Leathers? Hey, what was that? That shot of the fans. <laughs> Uh, I uh, I accidentally minimized it. Sorry, I'm str <laughs> struggling with the controls. <laughs> yeah, that that was um, yeah that that was part of the plan was okay. that uh, 
yeah, that uh, we would have chains uh, approach Neil Leathers and say that, uh, you know, that he would watch his back uh, in this match. And uh, because uh, the funny thing is, I don't know if a lot of people know this because it was so short lived. Neil Leathers was uh, part of the family for like a week. Yeah. We, you know what I need to find, Brian? I hate to interrupt you. I need to find that slingshot Turk and Rana. Yeah. That Daniel gave him in, in West, West Virginia. Virginia. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's when he got kicked out. He got he he got in the week before in Bassett, Virginia, and he kept going on and on about how the fans just still loved him and it didn't matter. That, that he was with the family, that the fans still loved him, and he just couldn't, uh, uh, that, you know, he, he could do no wrong. And we were like, okay, this isn't going to work. Yeah. yeah. So we, we the same When did he become dead now, Leathers? <laughs> oh, I don't remember. Dead? I don't remember. Do you don't remember, you don't remember that gimmick? Oh, you don't yeah. Remember dead now, Leathers? I don't remember that. Was that way that. after that? If everybody yeah. just loved to beat him up. Mm-hmm. It was almost like he was a progressive liberal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he uh, you know, it kind of reminded me of Rick Diesel because everybody liked to beat him up. <laughs> hey. just, just think, who else was like that in AIWF back in the day? God, I can't remember. That's oh 30, God. almost 31 it's years. Me. When I moved back from Maryland, you looked at me over at Old Jones School and you said everybody's had their shot at yours turn now. Me and you tagged against oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got you. But you can oh, see yeah. this. But you know, we were talking about last week, Rick Diesel was talking about heaping praise on Brian for being a technician. You really get to see that in this match. And so I would advise you, for those of you, especially those of you listening, visit the AIWF Ringside Wrestling YouTube page and look for the video of uh, uh, Brian Danzig versus Neil Leathers, AIWF United States Championship, Rocky Mount. Um, you will see it's a 25-minute video. That's not how long the match is. And I keep hovering over where you can see the freaking controls. I know that's probably annoying some people. Sorry about that. Messing up your lower third. But... Um, yeah, Brian didn't didn't really. I mean, it got kind of bloody at one point here, but this was this was more uh, just a real hard <laughs> hitting him with wrestling moves, Brian, not swinging chairs and throwing people through tables and whatnot. That you know, I think you're most remembered for. That's just because you know people remember the shock value from stuff like that. But like Rick Diesel was calling you a technician, and you're doing a pretty guy, a pretty good job of technically out wrestling Neil at this point. Yeah, I, I like to I like to break out the technical wrestling because I enjoy it so much. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is the the crowd did didn't really want to see that from me. They wanted to see the violence. They wanted to see the chairs and the hardcore. So that's what I gave them. Even though personally I preferred doing the technical wrestling, but I'm not out there for me. I'm out there uh, for the crowd. I'm out there to give to to put on a show for them. And I also knew that there were other guys on that show who would be giving them the technical wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, you need uh, like my thing is I think every show should have a little bit of everything. You should have brawling. You should have hardcore. You should have technical. You should have high flying. You, that should all be incorporated in in the whole show. Yeah, you can't you know, have everybody, every, do, everybody do their part. Yeah, you can't go out there and have you know seven matches of Frank Gotch catches catch can. You know, right. people are going to get bored with that. You know, mm-hmm. variety yeah, and, is and the spice you, of life. Right, and if you went out there and had six <laughs> matches of guys hitting each other in the head with stuff, they would get bored with that too. Yeah. You need to give them, you need to give a little something for everybody and something for the people who like a little bit of everything. Cause that's, that's me. My, my personal preference is, is technical wrestling that, you know, very, very realistic 
looking, you know, they're struggling. They're not just, it's not very, it's not perfectly smooth. You know, that that's my favorite type of wrestling to watch. Mm. If I, if I'm by myself and I'm putting on uh, an old pay-per-view, it's going to be uh, Crockett from uh, early to mid eighties. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, I, you know, the other day I watched a, like uh, a clash of champions and it was, uh, Mike Rotunda versus Brad Armstrong, and I'm like, oh, here we go. Oh yeah, this is this is what I like right here. Yeah. Um. Oh, which one was that? Clash of Champions, Mike uh, Rotunda versus Brad Armstrong. If it was during the Crockett days, it had to be like June of '88, somewhere like Clash of Champions yeah, th- two or three. I, th- I think so. Mm-hmm. I think I think it was the first. I think it was the first match. Yeah. But yeah. That that's that's uh, that's one of my favorites. Do what I was telling you, Reagan. Mine like a steel trap. He has. Mm. <laughs> I'm. I was actually going to say something nice about Neil Leathers. Okay, go for it. No. I was going to say he was one of the few that would wrestle me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, back in the oh, day, he was I, tough. He but was tough I will dude. say my only scar is from Neil Leathers. So, but you know, he. I. I did wrestle one or two matches. I think it was he. So, I mean, of all the things to say about. Neil Leathers, Neil Leathers would wrestle a woman. I don't know what that is to say, really, but you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's that. So, but yeah, I mean, I think you know Neil Leathers was very popular at that very, time, very. and and the people really yeah. liked him. He was charismatic and he had a natural ability, but he just didn't have the attitude for it. He he believed his own hype. I think, you know, maybe he got a little too big too quickly, or maybe that was just him. But either way, he just got a big head and, and, uh, uh, you know, started believing his own. Yeah. That all started uh, at the show where Neil uh, pile drive David Webb. Uh, because he approached me later in the week after he watched the, watched the show back and he was like, Man, did you realize? All right, here it comes. Uh, I, let me pause it real quick. He, he said, uh, you, "You're about to see the chair shot heard around the world one more time." But he <laughs> said to me, "Did you realize the show this past Saturday night? I was out there like five times. Like the whole thing revolved around me." And I was like, uh, "No, I didn't, Neil. That I never thought of it that way." But evidently, yeah, you've caught something I missed. So, and, and I think that was the beginning of that. He started thinking he was a big star at that point. So. But uh, anyway, uh, Chains is about to show us how you put a star out. And, <laughs> and, and so, bam! Making sea stars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go from being a star to seeing them. Here it is again. Oh, look at the impact of that chair just bending like that. Oh, you need, you need hey, to Matt. That volume. Huh? Matt, I got to run, man. All right. I, uh, it's my cue to get, jump off here. You guys have a great rest of your show, and I'll see you next time. All right, you want me to play it with the sound? All right, hang on, let me reset the settings here. Thank you, Rick Diesel. Uh, so yeah, we'll play it with the sound. Let me go ahead and and uh, I'm going to tell you something. If you want to pay close attention to myself and Doctor Bill's commentary, listen how that we were just so blown away by the mat by the chair shot. You can hear my reaction when Don Hopkins turns around to count to three. I have forgot all about, because this chair shot was so hard, I had forgotten all about the fact that this was for the U.S. title and the match was still going on. And you listen to my commentary, you know, he's a green rookie play-by-play guy. But, uh, oops, oh, hang on. Uh, but, uh, yeah, listen to uh, listen to my reaction and, and or me and Billy's reaction. This is great. All right, here we go. Let me get the sound up. And- and this is the end of Neil Leather's spinal column. Yeah, a good man is doing for whatsoever.
What a miscarriage of justice, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I've been in this sport for 25 years. I've never seen anything so horrible. But no, um, we thought he killed him. I mean, it, <laughs> this, it's a shame that, you know, it, uh, if you go to, and I'm encouraging people, go to YouTube and look this video up because I explained the situation that we had was sound at the time. I give the whole backstory of the match. You know, not anything in the dressing room that chains could tell us. But, you know, as far as how you had lost the title to Neil a couple of weeks uh, earlier in Elkin, you had the big rematch at Bassett at the back to school bash. But that got because the interference got thrown out by disqualification. Then you had this match in Rocky Mount, you know, and this was going to supposed to be the last one. And, and it sure was. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if Neil Leathers was the same after that. And uh, I could actually yeah. see. You look closely in the third row. I see a young Melinda Cheney out there with her mouth just hanging wide open. I know you can't see it right now, but it's on the video. So check it out. Go over the could, YouTube. Could, us is still on here. Could we agree that that Neil was one of those type that he couldn't leave the wrestling persona in the dressing room? He carried it with him in his everyday life, wanting everybody to know that he was a wrestler and, and that he held a belt and this and that. Can we all agree on that? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah it's, um, it, 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 it does something to you. I, I don't think, I think that would have went away if Neil would have been around a lot longer, but he just had the uncanny ability to piss people off to an extreme white hot level so quickly you know, if he could have hung around the business five, 10 years, I don't think it would have taken that long for him to get past that. You know, it's just like, um, you know, it's just a shame. I, it really is what might have been, but, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, play stupid games, win stupid prizes, I guess, is um, as that. But I don't even know if um, what Neil's up to these days. I hadn't seen him since he left wrestling. I haven't seen him, heard him. He come to a a show. It's been about I'm gonna say between six months and a year, uh, because uh, I mean he started a hole through me. He said, uh, uh, "Matt, where you stand?" He he would he sat in the second row from the front to your right mm -hmm. on the floor. And, and it just happened to be one night that, you know, I made several appearances mm -hmm. as the commissioner out there and, and this and that. Uh, and if looks could kill you, I'd be dead. Because wow. he started a hole through me. And I just leaned over the top rope, bat and all. And you've seen me do it a thousand times. I just smiled at him. Like, you know, hey, I'm the only one in here. It's easy. Yeah. But, you know, uh, but that's the last time I've seen him. Yeah. And that's, and that, see, that kind of bothers me too. If he's been holding a grudge over something for this long, you know, yeah. hey, that's not good. That's not good. Um, no. You know, you're only hurting yourself when you hold grudges like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. You know, but anyway, so, um, that's uh we've had a good good talk we've kind of gone around the bend we're hoping that by next week fans that we'll get start getting some match announcements for you for seasons beatings i already we already know one you know um it, it's my understanding i don't know if it's been completely signed yet smiling diamond day but you kind of told clara at the last show that she was going to be taking on jada stone again and yep. um and the fighters club was going to be banned from ringside so i'm looking forward Stop. to that uh, on our YouTube page, I have a poll up. It's the question's real simple. Do you think that Clara can defeat Jada Stone without her fellow Fighters Club uh, uh, assistance or whatever? Yeah, that's what it says. And uh, and there's been four votes, so the videos are doing a lot better than the poll. But three people voted no, and one person voted yes. And I'm not so sure that it wasn't Clara who went on there and voted yes. <laughs> But so check that out. We got interesting, you know, uh, I, 
I'm figuring out this YouTube things, you know, you can do polls on there and not only post the videos, but that's the biggest thing there. But, you know, I actually put the poster up there and all that kind of stuff. So again, folks, visit us at the AIWF ringside wrestling YouTube channel. You can pipe it through your TV. If you got a Roku device or PlayStation or anything like that, you know, watch us on the, on the big screen. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's it's great. It's really blowing up, and and we hope it continues that way. Gentlemen, any final thoughts before we go tonight? No, um, I, I, go ahead, Brian. But no, I was just going to say, um, I I really enjoyed our uh, talk tonight. We uh, covered uh, a lot of different topics, and um, uh, looking forward to um, seasons beatings. I think it'll be a very interesting event. And uh, just, uh, we're looking forward to it. Absolutely. I cannot wait. I miss wrestling so bad right now. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Yeah, I miss doing a wrestling show. You know, when we first switched doing two shows a month, I was like, eh, I don't know if I want to do that. But then I got used to it. And I'm just <laughs> like, you know, uh, wait, how many more weeks till wrestling? You know, it's, <laughs> wait, I got to wait till after Christmas? What the hell? You know, uh, so go ahead, Dave. Well, I'm sitting out here in California. Uh, and I, I worked this trip out to take this trip uh, out here that by the time I get back uh, everything's going to fall in line and, and the way the sea, uh, the way the holidays fall and everything, Christmas falls and New Year's I ain't going to work but I ain't going to have to work about a week and a half after I get back <laughs> Man, uh, California, and the first thing that came to my mind when you said California is In and Out Burger. Oh my God! Now, do you, are you a fan of those? You ever go well, to In and Out? I've seen several of them come down here, but see, they just don't have where you can get a truck into them. Oh yeah, that's right. They, yeah, they are kind of kind of small. And uh, you know, so, uh, but I'm still kind of partial to Whataburger. Or oh. they run big in Texas and stuff. So yeah, well, I you know I've never had Whataburger. I can't tell you, but I know In and Out is good old fashioned. Uh, you know, uh, I mean it's fast food, but they you know grill them and everything. But their French fries are the best, man. They make them in the store fresh. They take they have a slicer. They put a whole potato on there, skin on it and everything. Pull the lever, it goes down through, slices it slices it into like 10 pieces you know into fry slivers into a five gallon bucket and they take that bucket and dump it right in a deep fryer they have the freshest french fries you have ever eaten in your life you know and so uh i would encourage you to try them they have something called animal fries where they put like thousand island dressing on it it sounds disgusting but it's actually pretty good but yeah in and out burger can't put them over enough man every time i go out west it's the first place we eat when we get off the airplane yeah, man. so got me hungry now. Uh, you, know, uh, you can tell by looking at me, I'm perpetually hungry. But anyway, thanks, wrestling fans, for joining us. We appreciate you so much, and we will see you next week again for another episode of AIWF Ringside Wrestling. Listen, wherever you're at, if you got independent wrestling this weekend, anywhere near where you are, whether it's an AIWF affiliate or not, get out and support them, man. Uh, you know, this is what this is for to, to get the independence over. It still runs on live attendance with the independence. And if you ever buy merch from an indie wrestler, yeah, I cannot tell you how much good you are actually doing for them and to help their career along. So get out and support your local indie wrestling. We'll see you next week on this show fans. And for Brian Nancy, Smiling Diamond Dave, I am Matt Carter. Until next time, so long for now. Good night.